And please take a moment now so that we may prepare to bring you part two of tonight's entertainment. Now, I'm sure you all know that Jack Benny was born on Valentine's Day and that he wished to forever remain the age of... Ooh, wouldn't that be nice? I have just a couple of trivia bits to share with you. Mary Livingston, of course, was Jack's wife in real life, but I'll bet you never knew that her real name was... Anybody know? Sadie Marks. And she really did work at the hosiery counter of the May Company in Los Angeles. In fact, that's where they met. I think she was a teenager when they married. Um, anyone have a guess when Jack Benny first came on the air? No, it was 1938. 1932. Yeah. And as his characters were added over the years, who can forget Sheldon, Renal, Re Sheldon Leonard as the racetrack tout? Hey, bud. Artie Auerbach as Mr. Kitzel. Gladys Zabisco. Mabel Flapsaddle. Frank Nelson. You're going to hear him tonight. And anyone know who Eugene Patrick McNulty was? Dennis Day. Absolutely. And then there was Mel Blanc. How many voices did he take on? Professor LeBlanc, Jenks violin teacher, the announcer at the train station, Anaheim, Azusa, and... Ooh, come on. Good for you. <laughs> and then there was Polly the parrot. Ah, ah, but I can't whistle. And the old Maxwell car, and of course, Sai, who had a sister named Sue. Today, five decades after his last original radio broadcast, Jack Benny can still be remembered as an absolute classic. He played his part well, that of a vain, miserly, argumentative skinflint who emerged as a national treasure. What a legacy. Let us now go back and repeat the words from a show dated September 11th, 1949. Hey, that's just a little over 60 years ago. The Jack Benny Program, presented by Lucky Strike. To give you a finer, milder, more enjoyable cigarette, Lucky's pays more. Yes, Lucky Strike pays millions of dollars more for the official parity prices for one tobacco. At the tobacco auctions, as basket after basket of fine, light tobacco goes up for sale, as the price shoots up, up and up, as the top bid is reached time and again, you'll hear... And another basket of fine tobacco goes to the makers of Lucky Strike. Yes, Lucky's pays more, millions of dollars more, than official parity prices for the tobacco. No wonder. LS, MFT, LS, MFT. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Yes, in each and every Lucky Strike, in every pack, in every carton, in every fine, light, naturally mild tobacco, tobacco that makes Lucky a truly fine cigarette. So light up a Lucky. Prove to yourself how much milder Lighter, smoother, luckies really are. You'll agree, in all the world, there's no finer cigarette than Lucky Strike. <laughs> The Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Bill Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. Ladies and gentlemen, to me this is a very exciting day because it's the opening broadcast of the Jack Benny program. But for the local Chamber of Commerce, it's just another Sunday. Just another day to send their free sightseeing bus on a tour of our fair city. 
So let's go back a few hours and board one of these buses as it makes its way around our glamorous town. Your attention, please, folks. We are now entering Beverly Hills, where so many of our famous stars reside. Gee, Henry, isn't this exciting? Imagine us riding along a street where all the movie stars live. If we see one, we can tell all our friends that we... Oh, look, Henry, there's Lassie. Uh, no, lady, that, that's my kid. He needs a haircut. <laughs> and now, that early American home on the right is the residence of Gary Cooper. Gosh, Clara, Gary Cooper's house. Yeah, imagine all of this happening to us, Mr. and Mrs. Henry Figbottom. No, no, darling, it's Fitzpatrick. Oh, it's so hard for me to remember. We've only been married three hours. And now, folks, across the street to the left, I want you to look at the house nestled all among those palm trees. It's the home of Mr. Orson Welles. This house was conceived, designed, constructed, decorated, and furnished by Mr. Orson Welles. The trees grew by themselves. And now, lady, look, there's Lassie. Oh, th there's Lassie. Oh, yeah, so it is. And now this house we're going, coming to on the corner is the residence of Mary Livingston. Do you want to wear the blue dress or the gray one, Miss Livingston? Um, I think I'll wear the gray one, Pauline. Oh, gosh, Miss Livingston, you must be pretty excited about going back on the air today. Oh, I am, Pauline. It'll be nice seeing the whole gang again after such a long vacation. Well, didn't you see any of them during the summer? Only Mr. Benny. I saw him regularly. Oh, well, that's nice. Now, how often did you see Mr. Benny? Once a month, when he <laughs> came for the rent. Oh, <laughs> We used to sit around and play gin rummy, checkers, ping pong, badminton. Oh, then it was a social visit too. No, he always stayed until my check cleared the bank. <laughs> there, now how does my dress look? Oh, just lovely. The gray color sets off your tan beautifully. Where'd you get such a wonderful tan? Why, well, I thought I told you, Pauline. I spent four weeks at Catalina with my sister, Babe. Babe works for the biggest seafood restaurant in Catalina. Was she a waitress? No, she was diving for abalone. Oh, Miss Livingston, you're kidding me. Now, from what I heard about Babe, she was probably over there looking for a new boyfriend. No, no, Pauline. Babe is a great deep sea diver. In fact, she set a new record last month. Really? Yes. Didn't you read in the papers a few weeks ago when they lowered that man 4,500 feet in a diving bell? Yes. Well, when they pulled it up, Babe was in there with him. Well, I'd better get started for the studio. Bye, Pauline. Goodbye. Oh, say, Miss Livingston, when you see Phil Harris, give him a big kiss from me. Oh, Pauline, I wouldn't do a thing like that. Phil is a married man. Well, last night I dreamed he was married to me. We had a beautiful home in Encino, two children and everything. Pauline, what about Alice Faye? She was our maid. <laughs> Alice Faye was working as your maid? Through the courtesy of 20th Century Fox. Oh. oh, fine. Well, see you later. And by the way, Pauline, you needn't prepare dinner. This is the first show, and maybe after the program, Mr. Benny will invite us all over to the Brown Derby for a big... Now I'm daydreaming. <clears throat> Fry up some hamburger. <laughs> Gosh, Clara, I can hardly wait to tell our friends in Pottsville. We saw Mary Livingston's house. Yeah. Say, driver, is it true that Miss Livingston used to work at the May Company? Uh-huh. In those days, she was known as Nylon Nilly. And now, folks, I'd like you to notice that little white house with the green shutters. That's the resident of the popular singer, Dennis Day. <laughs> Oh, 
Dennis. Dennis? Oh, where is that boy? Dennis! I'm taking a shower, Mother. Dennis, I thought you took a shower last night. It's the same one. I can't figure out how to run it off. <laughs> oh, well, never mind that. Just put on your bathrobe and come out here. Yes, Mother. Oh, that Dennis. Why doesn't he get married and leave home like other boys do? Dennis, you better hurry. Yes, Mother. Here I am. I'm start I'll start dressing now. And hey, where are my shoes? Here they are. Well, son, are you excited about Mr. Benny's opening program? Yes, but this year is going to be different. I'm going to stand up for my rights. What do you mean? Well, I'm an average guy and I have normal intelligence. And it's not fair that Mr. Benny to play me the part of a dumb, stupid kid. There, I've got my shoes on. Now I'll go get my shirt. What happened, Dennis? Uh, uh, I tied my shoelaces together. <laughs> I'll untie them now. Now, Dennis, don't forget what I told you. This season, I want you to check, uh, get your check from Mr. Benny immediately after each program. Oh, Mother, I don't have to do that. I can trust Mr. Benny. Hmm. I wouldn't trust that man as far as I threw your father last night. And, Dennis, this year, insist that Mr. Benny pay you in American money. There's no reason why you should have to go to Tijuana each week to cash your check. Do you understand? Uh, si, senora. <laughs> Uh, but, Mother, you shouldn't talk about Mr. Benny like that. He's one of the best friends I've got. Some friend. What has he ever done for you? Well, what about last year when I had to have that operation and I couldn't afford it? Didn't Mr. Benny come to my rescue? Mm, yes, but I still think you took a chance telling Rochester to take out your appendix. <laughs> yeah, I guess you're right. I'm going to save my money and have it sewed up someday. <laughs> that scotch tape is wearing out. Well, I'm all dressed and ready to go, Mother. Wait a minute, son. What song are you going to sing on the program? Oh, Younger Than Springtime. I think Mr. Benny wants that to be his theme song. Well, I better go so I can rehearse it. Goodbye. <laughs> Beverly Hills. These people have to use hard water in their swimming pools. <laughs> and next, may I call your attention to that house with the spacious gardens all around it. It belongs to Phil Harris and Alice Faye. Gee, it sure is beautiful, ain't it, Clara? Yeah. Folks, we're really in luck. If you look closely, you can see Phil Harris out in the yard, talking to his gardener. How do you like the flower bed, Mr. Harris? No, oh, it looks fine, Tom, fine. <laughs> oh, I, I'm glad you like it. The lucanthinums are very colorful this time of year. Indubitably. However, I think it would look nicer if we had a border of Abronia umbellata. Mr. Harris, wouldn't it look better with the border of Lobelia? Labelia with lavandula variegata? Well, Mr. Harris, I, I was only suggesting. I know, but watch it, man. Watch it. And Tom, don't let me forget to irrigate the vegetable garden, especially the cabbages. I won't. But tell me, Mr. Harris, why do you irrigate your cabbages with bourbon? Isn't that unusual? Yeah, but, but that way I get the biggest heads in town. <laughs> well, that sounds reasonable. Look, Tom, uh, I gotta be running along. I gotta get to the studio and rehearse my band. My, my, you musicians lead such exciting lives. I never told you this, Mr. Harris, but my original ambition was to become a mus mus musician, too. Oh, you study music? Yes, but I wasn't too good at it. I couldn't understand the meaning of terms like pizzicato, andante, bellicoso, tasse, forte, and allegro con moto. So, I became a gardener. Pass me a shovel, bub. L look, I, I gotta get going, and Tom, I wanna thank you for taking care of the garden while I was vacationing in Catalina. Oh, I meant to ask you, Mr. Harris, did you have any luck on that fishing trip? Yeah, it was pretty good, pretty good. I caught two barracuda, three albacore, and Mary's sister, babe. 
I threw the barracuda and babe back. Well, I better change clothes and get started for the studio. Yes, sir. Will you take one of Miss Faye's car or will you ride your bicycle? Oh, uh, I'll take one of her cars. She hasn't counted them lately. By the way, Tom, tell Miss Faye not to expect me home for dinner. Oh? Well, you see, this is the first show of the season, and after the program, Mr. Benny will probably take the whole cast over to the Brown Derby for a big... I must eat more of them cabbages than I thought. I'll see you later. And now, folks, continuing our tour of Beverly Hills, we turn into Benedict Canyon Drive. Oops! Dead end. Folks, while I'm turning around, please notice that house on the corner. That's the home of Robert Taylor and Barbara Stanwyck. Oh, honey, if you only looked like Robert Taylor. I'd be happy if you looked like Robert Taylor. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, let me direct your attention to that little house in the middle of the block. It's the home of the famous musical aggregation, the Sportsman Quartet. And ooh, aren't we fortunate? Look who's waddling up the walk, Don Wilson. Mm. Well, hello, fellows. Oh, boys, we haven't got much time, so I'll get right down to business. You know, today is Mr. Benny's opening broadcast, and you really ought to have an appropriate song to say, welcome him back. While he was on vacation, he relaxed, took it easy, played golf, even went to Europe. In fact, this vacation did him so much good, you hardly recognize him. He looks wonderful, absolutely wonderful. Now, when you see him, how are you going to greet him? Hello, beautiful. How'd you get so beautiful? Where'd you get those lovely big blue eyes? Hello, beautiful. How'd you keep so beautiful? What's your secret? Won't you fool us? Tell us what you do to look so youthful. Are you really 39? Be truthful. Tell me, Mr. Benny. Hello, beautiful. Won't you tell us, beautiful? Where did you get those big blue eyes? Hello, Lucky Strike. How about a Lucky Strike? Why the Lucky Puff on it a while? L-S-M-S-T. That's a cigarette for me. Why the Lucky Smoke it with a smile? Lucky Strikes are made of fine tobacco. Everybody knows that it's a fact. Oh, hello, Mr. B. With our LSMMT, we're glad to be back on your show. Hello, we're glad to be back on your show. And now, as we continue along our way, is everybody comfy? Good. As we continue through beautiful Beverly Hills, we pause to admire one of the most lovely homes. The stately mansion across the street is the resident of Mr. and Mrs. Ronald Coleman. And on the other side of the 30-foot barbed wire fence is the home of Jack Benny. You mean Jack Benny? Star of stage, screen, and radio? That's what his underwear on the line spells out. Gee, Mr. Benny has such a big house. I wonder what's going on in there. Well, I got the dishes all washed. Better go make the beds. Ah, oh, it seems like old times, Mr. Benny being back on the air. Sure is good to have him home from Europe again. <laughs> Imagine him going over trying to swim the channel. Mm -mm, what a mess. It took me three days to get the grease out of those wrinkles. He wasn't the first one to thought of swimming the channel, but he was the first one to try it with passengers. Well, I better get upstairs. 
Mr. Betty's residence, Rochester Van Jones speaking. Hello, Rochester. This is Susie. Oh, oh, Susie. Can you talk now? Oh, sure. Mr. Benny's already left for the studio. You know, today's his first broadcast of the new season. His first program, huh? Gosh, is he nervous? Nervous? You should have seen him this morning. He combed his hair three times and then left without it. <laughs> anyway, I'm sure glad Mr. Benny's back. Things were awful dull around here while he was away. Yeah, but Rochester, didn't you have a lot of work to do around the house? Yeah, but there wasn't anybody here to make me do it. <laughs> oh, Rochester, ain't you the one? Yeah. Now look, honey, let's talk about you and me. How about a date tonight? Well, yeah, but uh, don't you have to get dinner for Mr. Benny? No, no, not tonight. You see, this is his opening broadcast. And after the show, he'll probably take the whole cast to the Brown Derby for a big... Rochester, why'd you stop talking? The more I said, the sillier it sounded. <laughs> anyway, sweetie, I'll call for you as soon as I can. And be sure to wear that same blue silk dress you wore last time. Rochester, honey, that dress is awfully tight. Yeah. By the way, Rochester, my cousin is staying here with us, and I, oh, gee, I kind of wondered if you couldn't get a boyfriend for her. Oh, but honey, we don't want anybody else along. Oh, but she's awfully cute. Maybe so, but... Oh, she's about five foot four. She has a gorgeous figure and a real cute smile. Everybody says she looks exactly like Lena Horn. She does? Yeah. Well, do you know anybody you can get for her? Yeah. Now I'm trying to figure out who to get for you. Never mind that. You're going with me. Okay, well, I gotta hang up, honey. I still got work to do. All right, Rochester. See you tonight. Bye. Goodbye. Ladies and gentlemen, we spent the last three hours going through Beverly Hills. Now, we're in the heart of Hollywood. Continuing down Sunset Boulevard, I'd like to point out our famous Palladium Ballroom. Goodness, Henry, this has been one of the most perfect sightseeing tours I've ever been on. Yeah, to think, the Chamber of Commerce supplies this bus free. And now, we come to one of Hollywood's most noted buildings. Occupying, occupying this full block. It's the nation's foremost radio network, the Columbia Broadcasting System. This is where I get off, driver. Well, I get off here. Open the door, please. What did you say, mister? I said this is where I get off. Get off? The Chamber of Commerce goes through the trouble of running a free bus so you tourists can see the city. And in the middle of, it, uh, of the tour, you want to get off. Open the door, please. But you haven't seen any, everything yet. From here we go to Figueroa Street, where we'll pose for a moment in front of the statue of Honest John, the original ghost rider in the sky. Open the door, please. Then we pass the city hall on our way to the Los Angeles Police Department where you'll see all the officers sitting around the table, pointing at each other. Open the door, please. I've got to get off here. But you haven't lived until you've seen the sun as it slowly sinks its golden rays into the blue goo of the La Brea Tar Pits. I've seen it. I've seen it. Now open the door. But, mister... Let him off. Let him off. Yeah, let him off. That argument is washing up our honeymoon. All right, bud. If you're gonna get off, get off. Thanks. Well, look at that crowd, waiting to see my first broadcast. Hey, it's Jack Benny. Hello, Mr. Benny. Hello, hello. Are you gonna have a funny program today? Yes, sir. It'll have more surprises than a box of Cracker Jacks. <laughs> oh, a box of Cracker Jacks. That guy's a riot. Well, looks like I'm gonna have a good audience. 
Yes, sir, and it'll be good to be back on the air. Younger than springtime, am I? Combed it and left it, oh my. <laughs> da, 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 da. Gee, I combed it down in front so I'd look like Garbo. Well, here's Studio B. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Hiya, gang. Okay, man, here he is. Let him have it. Ah, thanks, fellas. Thanks, thanks. Well, everybody's here. Hello, Jack. Hello, Mary. Come on over and give me a kiss. Oh, I can't. I just kissed Phil, and I gotta take it home to my maid. Well, give it to me, and I'll take it to your maid. <laughs> hey, Phil, uh, got your band number all set for the show? Yeah, Jackson, I'm gonna play that new cannibal song. Cannibal song? What's that? Some enchanted evening, you may eat a stranger. Oh, brother. <laughs> you may eat a stranger. <laughs> oh, uh-oh. Uh, what's the matter, Dennis? Does anybody have any scotch tape? <laughs> it's your own fault, kid. Stitches wouldn't have cost you much more, you know. Say, Jack, we only have a few minutes before we go on the air. Yeah, that's right. Say, where's Don? Oh, here I am, Jack, with the quartet. Oh, yes. Hello, boys. Hello, beautiful. How get so beautiful? Where get those lovely big blue eyes? No, no, boys. Save it for the show. We don't have time for that now. Yeah, Jack, we'll be on the air in two minutes. Where are the scripts? Oh, yes, the scripts. I have them right. Oh, 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 my goodness. Jack, what's the matter? Where are the scripts? I left them on the bus. I'll run out and see if I can catch him. Oh! Jack, Jack, what happened? I slipped. Rochester didn't get all the grease off of me. Hey, driver, driver, I, I left my scripts on the bus. A driver! Dr driver! And now we pause here. And now we pause. <laughs> let's, let's do that again. <laughs> and now we pause here for a few minutes in Pasadena so as you can see the famous Rose Bowl Stadium, which is over to your left. Driver, driver, open the door, open the door. Oh, it's you again. Yeah, I, I left something on the bus, open the door. I will not open the door. You will open the door. I left my radio scripts on the bus. You're too late. I threw them in the blue goo of the La Brea Tar Pits. My first program. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Our February tribute to that perennial 39-year-old Jack Benny. Any resemblance between our voices and all those famous characters is totally coincidental. But we hope we brought you some memories of what was one of the finest comedy pro shows of all time radio. And if you were born much later than that, we hope we brought you at least a hint of some of the great comedic writing. In those famous roles our cast tonight was Don Wilson, better known to us as Andre Dixon. Then we have, then we have Sue Godzinski and Jim Ryan as those two honeymooners, Henry and Clara Figbottom. Fitzpatrick! Oh, 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 yes, Fitzpatrick, whose bus tour took them to all those famous homes. Frank 
Nelson was played by ba Rob Prajunski. Who did I? Mary Livingston was Judy Marsh. Hello, everyone. And her maid Pauline was played by Donna Amesmeyer. Oh, thank you, Miss Livingston. The part of Mrs. Day was Ellie Babka. And of course, that famous son of hers was played by Tom Lenz. Younger than springtime, have I. The Harris Gardner role of Tom was done by Joe Ryan. And his boss, that southern boy with the curly hair and charm, to spare was Gary White. Who could forget about Jack's valet with that dulcet voice, Rochester, tonight played by Dave Sanchi. Oh, and Rochester's girlfriend, Susie, played by Donna, again. Oh, Rochester, ain't you the one? Of course. There is our music department, Mary Ann Sedelec. <laughs> And our sound department, Tom Lenz, and again, Donna. My name, as the announcer, is John Shefke. Let's see. Let's see now. That should be it. Our cast for tonight. Oh, John. Uh, we'll look forward to seeing you again next month. Oh, John. Oh, my. How could we forget the star of stage, screen, and radio, that man with those baby blue eyes and lovely luxe complexion? Here he is, Jay Summerfield. Just that we again thank the Riverside Township Board members for encouraging our appearances, which may be viewed again on Local Network 6 and on the internet website www.riversideradio.net. Thanks to Andre Dixon, who made sure that we're on the internet, and especially our technical staff here tonight. We have just one of them, and that's John V. Gelsomino. Thank you, John. I'd also like to have a special thank you for a member here that's not our member. He's a member of the Southside Radio Group, and he came in all the way from Frankfurt because we were shorthanded, and his name is Gary White. We invite anyone, any one of you who um, is interested in old-time radio to join us. If you have an interest in that golden age of radio and would like to be part of our group, there's no memorizing, just reading, and two rehearsals in the month, please let us know. We'd love to include you in our cast. And now, please do come back again next month on our usual fourth Friday evening. The date is March 26th and the time is 7.30. Our shows will be... Uh, that hero of Conan, Conan Doyle novels, Sherlock Holmes. And our other show will be an old classic, the Screen Guild version of Arsenic and Old Lace. <laughs> so be with us again, won't you? Bring a friend or a neighbor with you. Enjoy old time radio along with us. Good night, everyone, and you all get gold medals. Thank you for coming. Thank you.